Welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast with Dr. Kevin Reese, where we examine the body as a whole unit and move people from health burdens to health miracles. So get your questions ready, because the show starts now. Good morning and welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast. It is September 3rd, 2022. I'm your host, Joe Lachance, and I am here with the author of Peace Over Pain, Dr. Kevin W. Reese. Dr. Reese, welcome. How are you today? Happy New Day, Joe. I uh, was interviewed right. by the East Hartford Gazette yesterday. Oh, cool. And when this article comes out, I think it's going to be quite controversial. Oh, okay. Well, and do you know when it's coming out? I think in two Wednesdays. Okay. Well, you'll have to share that in the group. And let when, when group... I left the interview, he said we got enough for five stories. So. Oh, wow. Okay. We'll so, and this is Connecticut. So that could be uh, big news. You know, I asked, can't wait. And he said, well, he said, any suggestions on the headline? I said, you can use the word controversial. I'm okay with it. Okay. So okay. we'll see what it looks like. Yeah, I'm interested to see it. Please make sure we share that. So, hey, before we get started, I just wanted to remind everybody that we'll be taking your questions at around 1030 or so. So if you have a question for Dr. Reese, please leave it in the comments or click the Zoom link in the description if you want to be on air. That would be kind of cool if we could get someone on air. Uh, it is a Saturday morning, so maybe uh, people, more people are up and at them watching and in a little bit, uh, you know, mood, ready to talk. So, yeah. but um, we picked an interesting topic today, Dr. Reese, and it's something uh, that it does pertain to, obviously, peace over pain, but it's... Uh, it's more like, I would say, like a root, root, root cause of the reason, literally, why people have nutritional deficiencies and they don't know it. Yeah. And, and that would be the fact that they still think that by eating certain foods that have been known to have certain properties or certain nutrients in them, that they should be getting enough nutrition for their body because in the past that's what people did if you know there you ate a lot of good meats you ate a lot of eggs you ate a lot of vegetables leafy greens because that's how you felt like you were getting your nutrition and then maybe you would take a multivitamin or something to supplement it but most people would think that was enough right but Nowadays, it's not that way anymore because the food that you buy in the stores now, or even sometimes when you grow it yourself, does not have the same nutritional value as it used to or as it typically would. Right. So, and there are reasons for that. Um, you know, and the one I think we're going to talk about most today is start right at the base, the soil. Like it, you can't grow nutritious food without nutrient dense, nutrient rich soil. Yeah. Right. Yep. So let's start with that. So the soil that they're growing your produce in and that they're feeding the they're growing the corn and and whatever they feed the livestock is not grown in the same type of soil or even in the same type of way that it used to right right yeah so the interesting thing about soil too is even if it is nutrient dense as the years go it it whittles down so you have to keep feeding it right we have to understand that it's a it's alive and the plants are alive and the plants need minerals in order to become a healthy plant just like we do just like we do 
and there's 60 essential minerals out of the 90 essential nutrients. We, as human beings, do not have high minerals in our soil anymore. We used to. Right, of course. Our ancestors did, but we do not. And so the plants are basically weak. We can call them nutrient deficient and all that, but I like the term weak better. <laughs> because people can relate to weak. If you meet a fragile human, you can say, oh my gosh, this person is weak, right? Like, oh my gosh, if I just push them like that, they'll fall over, right? Our plants are weak. And what happens, Joe, is when they're weak, they can't fight off bacteria, fungus, insects and that's where we as humans brought in the pesticides and the herbicides and so we're you know they're supplementing the the plants so that they can sell it to us and so the farmer is taking a big bushel of broccoli or Brussels sprouts, and he's selling it to the grocery store off of volume. There's no check on the nutrition. The, the grocery store isn't like putting it underneath the thing and saying, oh, okay, it's got this much calcium. We're good. Thank you. It's just by the volume. And then it goes on sale. And then we walk through the grocery store, we buy it. We don't even know how good it is it's sold by the pound again right. right 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 and so what's happening is even the people that are promoting eat your fruits and vegetables each of and i used to be one of them an apple isn't as healthy as it was 200 years ago a, a carrot was healthier 300 years ago you know because of the soil in the farming practices yeah that's the second thing i would say it wasn't even 300 years ago i would say it was 100 150 years ago yeah before industrial farming let's mm -hmm. you know let's get down to it um you said the farming practices and that really means industrial farming it means large scale farming uh, which started, you know, with the Industrial Revolution. I mean, it all came and grew up together. As our population grew, especially after World War II with the whole baby boomer generation, we had to find faster, more efficient ways to feed our largely expanding population. Right. Enter big corporations and yeah big corporations and big fields of corn big fields of soy big fields of cotton you know the ones that sell and now it's peace right because the the vegan movement the plant-based movement is now now they're doing peace so um so what's happened here you mentioned the past so let's go over that Electricity, the thing that we're using right now to broadcast on our Facebook group through the Zoom is our gift and our curse. Right. When they flipped the switch and they started electricity, two major things happened that depleted the soil. One, we stopped burning wood. And humans had the practice of burning wood for energy and then taking those, those remaining wood ashes, which are full of minerals because trees suck minerals out of the ground and they suck more than a regular plant because they're so deep. Right. And 
humans would take that ash, they would put it in their salt, they would put, sprinkle it on their food, and most importantly, they would go put it in their gardens and farms. And that would give the soil more minerals. Almost returning it back to the, to the soil from the wood. We do not do that anymore at all. I mean, I'm sure there's someone out there in a cabin burning wood, but it's so rare. So that's number one. The second thing is we started damming rivers. To create electricity. Right. Rivers, which are full of minerals, water is oxygen and oxygen bonds. That's why spring water has minerals. So when water brushes over stones and rocks and, and soil, it grabs the minerals and takes it with it. So these rivers, they used to flood the lands. And then when they finally receded, farmers would jump out there and start raking in. They would start raking in the minerals into the soil. So flooding was actually a good thing back then. It's mm -hmm. called the flood plain. And we got so much minerals into our soil from the oceans via the rivers. Right. We don't have that anymore. So these two mineral depletion mother nature methods are gone. Right. And and another thing the farmers used to do was controlled burns. So they would sometimes at the end of the season, burn the fields. Mm. So, and get the ash back into the soil yeah. for next year. And, and, and I think, you know, so by damming the rivers and by us stop using wood, stop burning it, we stopped also replenishing the soil. We hindered that process. We changed the natural way that things used to be done. And we didn't kind of make up for it. Do you know what I mean? We didn't even understand or realize what they were doing. And then again, they started going from the small family farm type of uh, concept to these large scale industrial farms. Right. And their practice was not to replenish the soil. Instead, what they would, they came up with fertilizer, right? Yep. And it's an artificial way of replenishing the soil, correct? Unless you're using cow manure. And again, that was another thing the farmers used. They would recycle the manure from the other animals into the fields. Let's talk about fertilizer. Yeah, let's talk about it because that's what they the do. new age fertilizer is made of three minerals. It's NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Again, we need 60 essential minerals and they're using three right and so they've learned that they can do that so they're cheating the system and they're growing weak plants and again the plants with only three minerals can't fight off the environment and so now they have to supplement with herbicides and pesticides and whatnot plants a lot of people don't understand this. And this is what the vegan movement lacks. Plants protect themselves. They're alive. Right. You remember I told the story some episodes ago where the plant bit me. Right. Like it, plants fight back. And, and they don't necessarily fight against humans. All of these defense mechanisms are for their natural predators, which are bugs and, and worms and, and various, yeah, different kinds of pests. So when you say, right, that little thing bit you, that didn't hurt you. But if a fly or some kind of predatory bug jumped on there and tried to bite it, it, it would hurt that bug. 
And the bug would know, okay, I don't mess with this plant. And, and we talked also a couple of weeks ago about lectins. And, and, you know, lectins aren't put in beans because humans were eating beans. The lectins are that natural defense mechanism for bugs. So what you, you know, lectins gives you an upset stomach and it doesn't work well with your digestive system, but for a bug, it's poison. Right. It kills though. You know what I mean? That's their natural defense mechanism. And almost all plants have that somewhere built in. You know, we just don't know it. And some of them don't affect us because they're not for us. We're right. not a bug. Right. So it doesn't hurt us. But you're right. Every plant had its own, has its own natural defense mechanism. And every plant will try to reproduce at least one uh fruit or one seed before it dies it's just so divinely amazing the whole thing is so amazing i don't know how i don't know how vegans have this argument well i do know how because i was one once but i didn't debate it when i was like these things are so alive they're so mm -hmm. alive man right you know and this ecosystem is so it's designed for the strong to consume the weak. It, it's absolutely designed, whether we're talking animals or we're talking worms. You know, the other day I was on a walk and I looked down and there was probably millions of ants attacking a worm. Right. I was like, wow, what am I witnessing right now? And the worm had no chance. I see it all the time here. It's it's just, it's mind blowing. And it makes me feel so insignificant because, and that's a good thing mm -hmm. because we're just part of it. We're just part of this divine ecosystem and there's levels to it. Right. And so at the smallest level, you have the bacteria and the fungi. fungi yeah. Right. And then and it then it comes up to the minerals. Then you have the minerals, the rocks and the gems. The other day I was telling my mom, my mom's a big um gemstone person. She's into making the jewelry and all that. And I was talking about chromium and vanadium. And she goes, oh, yeah, I know about that from my gemstone. <laughs> you know, this is this is mind blowing that these essential minerals are part of rocks. And, you know, and then you go up and the next level is the plants. Right. And then the next level is the insects. Right. And then the next level is the the animals, the walking and we, animals. And we all run off the same thing the minerals that are in the earth or supposed to be in the earth like you said plants need the same nutrients that we do animals need the same nutrients that's right that we do but all those nutrients come from the soil and here's the thing what did the, you know, what did the Bible say, right? You know, you don't want to get real religious about it, but we come from the earth, right? Ashes to ashes, from ashes dust you were dust. made, ashes you shall return. Right. That's, like if, if, yeah. we, if we burned you, Joe. Mm -hmm. And you and, will when I die, I'm getting cremated. And Joe, and Joe, you're, you're now a big thing of ash that would be better served sprinkled on a garden than over the ocean or well, even in the ocean it will return but yeah but no you know some people will put it in a vast and then put it on the, the shelf this vast this is my water but you know and then you put it on the mantle that's a waste of minerals mm -hmm. you know consume me consume mm -hmm. me and and that's what happens with people that are buried too they get consumed back into the ground and back into the ground and and 
This is all amazing stuff. And so back to the soil, back to the farmers, they're using three minerals, NPK, and that's their way of, of keeping their business going. And the other thing that we don't do that would create more minerals is composting. Right. Now, smaller gardeners may compost. I have a community garden I go to around the way here in Connecticut, and they have a huge composting pile. But how do you do that for 7 billion people? Right. Composting is what creates plant-derived minerals. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have in our 90 essential nutrients, plant-derived minerals. We get them from Utah. And so... You know, when you, when you have a big bucket of banana peels and leaves. Eggshells are real good for calcium in the egg soil. Eggshells, yeah. And then it all just composts and it creates a mineral plethora of what we need. Right. It's amazing stuff. So these are three, and you mentioned burning, you know, burning. So, you know, there's four reasons that we're not getting minerals in the soil anymore and that's making it depleted now plants create their own vitamins amino acids and essential fatty acids mm -hmm. they create their own but it's the minerals that creates the plant along with the sun and the water right it's mineral sun and water and you know a nice healthy plant is going to create its own nutrition right but a weak plant, not as much. And so you go to your stop and shop, you go to your Whole Foods, you go to your, wherever you're at, you go to your grocery store, you're looking at broccoli, Brussels sprouts, spinach, carrots, potatoes, et cetera, that are not strong. And mind you, this even carries over to organic food. Oh yeah. Because really organic just means uh, no pesticides, right. correct? And I don't know if they use chemical fertilizers or not. I'm not sure. By but, the way, this is where this is where Monsanto's yeah, this making is, a fortune off the weak plants, right? Because they're yeah, and we can get into GMOs, but that's a whole nother way. Yeah, that's a whole other podcast, right? That's another reason the soil's depleted because they're growing genetically modified crops, which do nothing for the soil. Nothing. Yeah. And like you say, they're weak. They're just using it for feed. They're making ethanol out of it. They're using it as fillers. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're using it to make high fruit dose corn syrup. See, a lot of the GMO foods are used to create these byproducts, these artificial sugars and, and hydrogenated oils and, you know, all those different wheat products they use, you know, uh, yeah. the way they break it down. So, yeah, we have a problem here on this planet. And I don't think people realize this. I don't. Um, I, if, you, if you check out the news, you see how people like Bill Gates and giant corporations are just buying up farms left and right. The guy that interviewed me yesterday, and shout out to him, his name is Bill Doak. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he was actually quite sad about it because he, um, he's part of a hunger organization that helps you know, underprivileged communities get food right. and he's just like what are we doing here he's like yeah we're giving them food to survive but they're not getting nutrition they're getting calories right and i'm like yeah that that's that's what's happening you right need calories to live and have energy to move but you're not getting the nutrition no and, no. and that's what's setting up the medical monopoly to make trillions of dollars because well they start right at the bottom if if you're not if you're, you're malnutrition you get sick right because now now you know we just had someone come 
through the clinic just the other day. The kid was 25 years old. He was messed up, man. I mean, he was in rough shape, 25, disabled. Wow. Could, couldn't go to work. From so, nutritional issues or from physical issues? Both. Wow. So, you know, we're looking at a society that is getting sicker, younger, and it's going yeah, to keep happening. That. It's going to keep happening. And then the journalist asked me yesterday, he said, so you want to reform and, 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 and change the society? And I said, no, because it's impossible. You can't. That's not an expectation I'm willing to carry. There is no change happening. The change happens individual to individual. Like this 25-year-old kid, he comes to us. I don't feel good. We can see what's going on with him. And we can figure out the solution and we can get him better. And maybe he goes and tells five or 10 other people. That was but what that's I was gonna not going to change the medical monopoly. No, that's not going to change the nutrition in the soil. That's not going to change the situation that we as humans are in. But it's going to help this poor soul, right? So it's just one person at a time. I'm not here to reform anything. Right. But the knowledge that we give is to inform people to know what's going on so that they can cut their limited beliefs and they can get to the solution, which in our case is protocols. Right. It's protocols. Because the only way that you can beat this soil depletion problem is going to be through supplementation. There is no other way. Right. Even if you grow your own food. Even if you grow your own food, because I mean, you got to be super farmer. Like, yeah, um, I, I just started gardening two, three years ago. It's so there's so much involved and I didn't change my soil the next year. I didn't replenish it. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's so much work. And I mean, you got to be a super gardener to right. grow your own food. It's almost better if you hook up with a local farm. Yes. Depending on where you live. A community That's, garden with, with somebody, right. with one, two or three people that really know what they're doing. That would be beneficial. Now we're talking community. Yeah. We're talking, like you say, one person starts to add up to be a group, then a community. And this is, you know, you talk about, you're right. You're not going to change society and you're not going to change the world. But the one of the solutions is small communities living a certain way, like you say. That's one solution. Yes. I myself am starting a community garden here with the church, right? Okay. Um, and I feel great about it. You know, I provided them with the seeds. They are composting. And believe me, we have a lot of stuff to compost here. Um, and we're getting it going. And it'll be a place for people to come and trade food. We're going to eventually have a co-op market because this is what we need to do. Yeah. This is what we need to do. And there, luckily where you live, there are still some local farmers who will not sell their land, uh, who do fresh beef, who do chicken, who do eggs, and who grow produce that you can get it from and at least know that it's a notch above or a few notches above what you are going to get at the grocery store and even Whole Foods, correct? Yeah. But I, I still think we need to supplement. Absolutely. And that's why we have the 90 essential nutrients. It's just a drink every day. And it, that's your insurance policy right there. And that's what the journalist asked me. He's like, what's that in your, you know, in your, in your, you know, I had one of the smart dude <laughs> thing, and he's like, what is that? And I said, that's my nutrition. Right. And, and yeah, he, I and, think and, and that blows some people's minds. They're like, all right, so you're saying all I have to do is drink that to get my nutrition and I don't need it from the food. Yeah. The food is a bonus, right? Food is your energy to walk amongst the world, right? You can't supplement that. 
And if you're going to eat food, right, you might as well eat good food, the best food you can put in your body. And, and you can tell, Kevin, you talked about apples. Cut open an apple now. There's no seeds in the middle anymore. The meat is dry. It's not juicy anymore. I'm talking about the ones you buy at the store, right? Yeah, just cut one open. See the difference. You know, you the color of the tomatoes, Kevin, right? They're like pink. They're not even red. And it, you can look at it and go, that is not nutritious. It almost looks fake. Yeah. You do not want to eat those foods. Because, you know, so even if you're on the 90, and I agree, you have to have that strong base of the nutrition to know you've got it. And then when you do eat food, eat the best food you possibly can. Eat the best food you possibly can while you can still find quality food in this world. And right? stay off the poor four foods. Right. Because those are the foods that block the absorption of right. the 90 essential nutrients. So there's no point in taking in this pricey nutrition and then blocking it. Right. I and mean, when I say eat good, that's what I mean. You yeah. know, to me, that's like, you don't eat fried foods anymore. So th this is a very simple formula. Right. And we can do it. You can combat it on a small basis, even in your own, you know, like you say, in your community. And even in your own little garden or even in your own lawn, if you want, you now know you can replenish to start replenishing the soil. You know what I mean? To your best of your abilities, because like you said, you can't change the world. They're not going to stop factory farming, no matter what stop, you do. Not going to stop anything. Chem no, trails, the train is moving. Chemtrails <laughs> aren't, aren't, aren't going away. GMOs aren't going away. Soil depletion isn't going away. You know, police brutality isn't going away. No. Um, people getting locked up for, you know, marijuana. marijuana isn't going like you can't change everything. No. You know, and the best thing you can do, because the journalist asked me yesterday, again, he's involved with the hunger movement mm -hmm. here in East Hartford. And he's like, well, what, what should we be giving these kids that don't have money for food? And I'm like, ideally, you raise enough money to give them the supplements they need. Start. And then you train them to stop eating the four foods. Yeah. That's it. And yeah. these kids will grow and they will get into their 30s and be darn near disease free. Right. But and that's if you, the, yeah. if you don't get the nutrition and you're eating the bad foods that block absorption, you're going to end up in the medical monopolies rabbit hole in your 30s and if not 30s definitely 40s and and you know we you know we got to look at a reality the medical monopoly and the, they almost prey upon the low income people because even the food industry all the cheapest foods are the go most garbage foods you can find but unfortunately like you say underprivileged whatever can't afford good food so they have you know they have to eat the, the processed foods that they give you and sometimes oh you get cans and you and i both know anything canned has no nutrition regardless if it starts off with nutrition so um you know, and the worst quality meats and things like that. And, you know, they give them a community dinner and it's fried foods or it's hot dogs. Right. And it's just not it's not good meat that they're giving them. And, and it's a problem. It is. He invited me to come talk to that organization. And I'm like, Are you, I'm down. But you, you sure? Because <laughs> everywhere I go. It, you know, well, you, it's, it's contra. I'm walking controversy. It's just walking. Yeah. Well, you're coming in. You're going to say, well, throw away that bread. Don't serve the kids sandwiches on rolls. You know, <laughs> you're going to come in and, and all these things that they think they're doing is is wonderful. Right. 
you're going to tell them, no, 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 you're not, you're not really helping these kids by giving them bad food. You're hurting them in the long run. And you start telling people that, you know, you're, you're pushing buttons there because that's just their work. They feel like they're helping. And here you're telling them they're harming. So good luck with that, Kev. Well, yeah, they're, they're, they're helping as far as calories. Right, right. And that's why we have an obesity problem, you know, all these different things. You know, we haven't even talked about soy the way that depletes the soil, all, you know, everything in soy, what it does to your body, you know? Um, but again, that's another topic for another show today. We were, you know, we're focusing on the soil and the reasons why the food you buy in the store and even the meat you eat, anything that is fed from the soil is no longer very nutritious. I'm not going to say it has zero, but it doesn't have what you used to think it had. And there are, before we get to the questions, I just want to say that there are areas that are better. Yes. So, the, you know, and, um, you know, you, you, if you do your research, you will find them. I know there's one in Costa Rica. It's not all of Costa Rica. It's just one area in Costa and Rica. There and are certain countries that, you can buy your fruit from because even if you go to the store, it tells you where the fruit came from. Right. It'll and right. Search the countries that don't use a lot of factory farming. Costa Rica, even Mexico is a little bit better. You find a lot with the Latin American countries, they tend to stick with more traditional farming methods, but you don't want to buy produce coming out of Florida. Right. You know, or out of Texas, uh, because they're all grown uh, factory style. You right. Know? So, all right. Well, you mentioned, I think we probably should get to the questions, but of course we got to have our, uh, a little commercial. Um, we do have a few good questions this week, so, uh, we'll get to that, but this has been a great discussion, Kevin mm -hmm. definitely, uh, has. And I think it's something that I hope we get a lot of feedback on because it's an important thing, but let's come back with the questions read Peace Over Pain yet? This short but powerful book reveals how to eliminate chronic pain and or illness faster than any other known therapeutic approach. Download the Peace Over Pain book for only $4.95 and gain instant access to the ebook version, audiobook version, and a video training with Dr. Reese. Go to peaceoverpain.com and start reading or listening right now. This is the information you've been praying for. Okay, very cool. And yeah, I just remind everybody you can find Peace Over Pain at Amazon.com. Uh, if you get Audible, you can get it for free uh, if you want to do a trial. And uh, you can also get it at PeaceOverPain.com or by joining our Facebook group. Yep. So, uh, uh, let's go with our questions, Dr. Reese. Mm -hmm. um, we did get a couple comments. I guess uh, you did put out a couple videos uh, on IG this week. Uh, one was about cancer and one was about death. And, and we got some good feedback on it. So let's, uh, let's talk about a couple of the comments. Uh, this is from Vasu on IG. And this is in response to the death video. Um, so he says, or I met a senior lady yesterday. She said she is not ready to die. The fear was strong. Being able to be in relaxed and peaceful would be great when it's time to go. Yeah. So yeah. I agree. <laughs> Pretty much what my video was. I was uh, meditating in a cemetery and uh shared that with people and yeah meditation is the best way to prepare yourself for death yeah and and kevin i know you and i both actually read some books uh some yogic techniques uh on how to actually prepare yourself to die you know there there are ways to do it um so yeah it's it's just something it's much better to be okay with it 
than to fight it when the time actually comes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And and a lot of people don't want to talk about it and I'm sure we'll do a podcast on it. And, you know, I talk about it a lot in my other podcasts and, you know, it's, it's something that we have to face. It's the most important thing. Yeah, I agree. I agree because it's the biggest, I think it's probably one of the biggest fears uh, that humanity has. Like you can say it's almost universal, Yep. you know, except for those who realize it's something that they, they got, you know, fear in any form holds you back. So. Right. Right. All right. This is from nourish the new you on IG. And this is in response to your cancer video. I haven't had a smear for 18 years and I pulled out of the mammogram program after having the first one 12 years ago. My decision was met with much incredulity. Of course, my GP primary care doctor removed me from his practice. Mm. (laughs) I chose not to outsource my health and well-being to a medical doctor. So here's somebody who got fed up with the medical monopoly um, after she had a mammogram. Yeah. Uh, and she, Because she doesn't want to go fishing anymore. <laughs> right, right. And I, I also got another response underneath that video. And it was a long response. That's why it wasn't sent to you. But there was a woman who misunderstood what I was saying in the video. It was the interview with me being interviewed by Nancy. You talked about the sea monster. Yeah. And she misunderstood what I was saying that mammograms and colonoscopies, they're not prevention. Right. And so um, she misunderstood what I said. Um, I never said that people shouldn't get them. Right. That's a personal choice, but. I'm just saying it's not prevention. It's detection. There's there's a difference. Big time. Big time. If you walk into your medical monopoly and they run you through one of these million dollar machines and they say, oh, you got the sea monster. We can take it out and you'll probably live a long, healthy life. That's not prevention. That's detection. Yeah. Prevention is going to be staying off the poor four foods getting your 90 essential nutrients, doing your postural therapy, keeping a good mindset, you know, getting the nutrition you need, that's going to be prevention because the sea monster manifests through free radical damage, blood sugar issues. It's a biochemical soup, right? That's prevention. And right. that's what I was saying in the interview with Nancy Barrow. And that's what the woman misunderstood, but she was nice enough. I did correct her on it and she was nice enough to say, Oh, okay, I get it. So, well, and you know, they have to understand that's how the medical monopoly markets it. They branded it as prevention, right? You know, the, Oh, to prevent disease, get checked. Well, no prevent disease, and <laughs> stop eating GMO foods and, you know, you know, but we know, but yeah. So it is not prevention. So yeah, good. like I have a big decision to make in the next few years because they start the colonoscopy thing at 45. I know. So I have to make a decision on, will I get one or not? I'm doing all the right things, but then I got to say to myself, Oh, well, what about all the damage I did in my teen, you know, my twenties, like, you know, it, it, it's a thing. Maybe I get one, just you know, so I can report back, you know, or something, but I don't feel like I would need one. And I think one of the problems with these tests mm-hmm. is it messes with your mind and, of course. and people get all scared and worried and this and that, and that's almost worse than the actual thing, you know? Right. No, I won't get one. I got two. And uh, that was the second one was when they told me they, oh, we have diverticulosis. Oh, no. Uh, And that was started the chain. And I almost feel like I was better off not knowing. Because, you know, the diagnosis, once you get it, you start manifesting it. And they've been bugging me now that I'm 60 years old to go get one. And I say, no, no, I'm not getting it. Come and get me. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, that's, but, the, that's the other thing and, and that I'm constantly preaching in the book and on here is, is that the, your doctor is not an authority figure. They're not a police officer. They act like one, but they're not. No. They work for you. And you know, it's funny. That's my like doctor. hiring a plumber. Yeah. And having the plumber walk in your house and be like, yeah, I think you should change the furniture. Like, no, 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 exactly. <clears throat> but yeah, no. So I just, you know, I still talk to my doctor, but we don't discuss that. Okay. So there's your comments. Here's our first question. And this is from Kate, a uh, karate grandma. Ooh. Isn't it better to find colon cancer or breast cancer in the early stages before it metastasizes and it's too late to treat? So we, I, we were just talking about this. You're, you're going yeah. through that debate yourself. Yeah. I th um, I'd, I'd say it's an advantage. Yeah, sure. Why not? Now, would you say don't go check? don't get a colonoscopy till you actually feel some pain or till you think you might. I mean, if everything's going good and you, and let's say you're already checking your blood every six months and you're eating well, um, do you do it at the 45 year old and the 55 year old mark? Or do you kind of just judge when you think, would be the good time to do it. And uh, the same with a, a monography. Should you wait till you feel a lump? Why get, you know, why do it until you feel like there's something wrong? Yeah. I, I, you're better off, you know, the saying better late than never. You're better off getting off the poor four foods, getting the 90 essential nutrients, doing what you need to do and letting right. your body handle it. And give it, you give your body a chance. Be, like, I can't you know. tell you how many times that I thought maybe I had the virus, you know, the, the, the C, C virus. Uh huh. And, you know, I felt not so good for like three hours. And then it went away. Mental. And, you know, I have to assume that something entered my body. And my immune system kicked its ass. Right. And so I don't see why the sea monster is any different. Because no, what, I agree. Is it? what is it? It's division of cells. It's, it's, it's when cells get all screwy and they do this and that and this and that. And your body knows how to handle it if it's operating correctly. So who's to say, who's to say that a normal person doesn't walk around and they have cancer for the month of, month of June and the body corrects it and it's gone by July and you don't even know. How many people do we hear who could heal their own cancer? Because once they find out they have it, they make the necessary changes and come back a year later and it's gone. It's gone. Come back six months later. Louise Hay, right? Yeah, That's I'm right. sure. Read right. her story. Uh, Myrtle Fillmore, read her story. There are tons of people who decide to take their health in their own hands once they get a diagnosis and they are successful yeah. and it's not an easy process. And it is the combination of diet, of taking care of your body with posture oh, and of a great mental. The mind is probably when you're trying to heal yourself from cancer, probably one of the most important parts of it. Because your mind, you know, can take you right in and, and make it worse. So that's right. So, yeah, no, I agree. You know, you don't necessarily have to follow their timeline. Just do it when and you feel like you might, you know, need it. And, and I hate, you know, a lot of people aren't going to agree with that, but no, whatever. Um, <laughs> right. Kuya, Kuya on IG. Well, this is good. I don't expect you to stand up and do this, but what examples of posture exercises? Ah, yes, yes. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of P-Ray exams lately, me and Rain Krause, and uh, it's been getting some traction on Instagram. So people do ask here and there. 
And so postural therapy is basically there's, there's yoga poses, there's Pilates exercises, there's classic stretches, and then there's postural exercises that were actually invented. And it's sort of those four mixed into a protocol, right? It's protocol based. So if you had problems with your hamstring, you would actually follow a protocol, no different than nutrition, same concept. Right. right. So an example would be, I can give you some classic ones. Um, runner stretch is a big one. Um, arm circles, arm circles, standing arm circles, very easy one. Right. Yeah. Uh, heroes pose. It's a good one. I do that every morning when I wake up. Uh, you know, there's so many. There's frogs. one where you put your uh, fingers on your temples and just do this. I find that to be very good. Elbow curls. Yeah. Yes. That I do every yep. morning along with the arm circles. And of course, static back is a very simple one. Static back is the granddaddy. Frog is a very simple one. You just yeah. lay on your back and kind of put your two bottoms of your feet together and yeah. lay there with your legs spread. <laughs> right. Yeah, there are some very simple, basic ones to get started. And it's basic. I know mine is a three exercise routine uh, that you do daily. And then you switch it up every two weeks. Yep. And I know your initial package, I think, is four weeks, four different sessions until you come back for your next p ray exam so two weeks, two weeks every two weeks yeah but they give you four at least you did i don't know maybe that's not what everybody gets but i got four distinct workouts brian scully just checked in and said can you show us hero pose with a smile so you might be being you got the room out. over there come on Kevin. <laughs> you can hero, move <laughs> i'll tell you what hero's pose is it's you get on the floor and you sit on your shins, basically, and you sit back on your heels, get your arms straight like this, and you sit there for a minute. That's good for your shoulders and back. Your, right? your, your quads are going to stretch right off. Just and, and, you know, some people can only do it for, you know, 15 seconds. What's that up. one, the sitting, the sitting one where your back is against the wall? What is that one called? Yeah. Sitting, um, sitting, sitting. I forgot the name, but uh, it's, it's yeah. But again, we, yeah. you can check it out in the clinic, get your P ray and you can look into, you know, there's, you'll find, you know, then you get the door opened yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the postural exercises. But uh, yeah. I, it's definitely worth doing, especially like you say, for people who do yoga, they're already used to that. People who go to the gym and do some kind of stretching routines, yeah. they're already used to that kind of stuff. So this is not a new concept, uh, but what it is, is a more, uh, I guess you'd say a regimented approach to it to make it simple to fit into your life. So Brian just asked another question. Mm -hmm. uh, any suggestions for lower back, especially degenerative disc disease? Static back. Uh, lumbar four and five. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's postural therapy. Disc disease is, it's, it's simple to reverse. We have to understand that from a biochemical standpoint, this has all been eliminated in animals, first of all. Mm -hmm. So be happy about that. So we get on the nutritional protocol and we load you up with the minerals you need. Your bones need a lot of minerals. Mm -hmm. They're made of minerals, right? And so that's step one. And then you do the postural therapy, which is going to make your muscles functionable because it's bones Bones are moved by muscles. Right. Right. Bones don't move. These no. bones aren't. The muscles are what moves them. Right. So, yeah. you know, disc disease or spondy or herniated disc, bulging disc, all that is very reversible. It's just people need to break their limited beliefs 
and get on the protocol. That's what I was telling the journalists yesterday. I was like, the knowledge, the information is just to break limited beliefs because mm-hmm. we're so warped in the, oh my gosh, this is Brainwash. forever. Oh my gosh, I'm going to go to the medical monopoly. Oh, they're going to give me an injection. They're going to give me the surgery. They're going to give me the, the pills. You're going to end up in a black, dark hole. There's nothing right. there. There's nothing there. No, it's not. It's a kind of a miserable existence, what they put you through for the sake of living a longer life. Who wants to live a longer, miserable life? Right. So to Brian, you know, know, the the discs are degenerating because you don't have enough nutrition. Mm -hmm. Right. And the muscles are dysfunctional. We need to see your P ray. You can submit your photos for free and we'll take care of that. And you can see with your own eyes how out of whack your body is. You would be surprised if you're over the age of 30, especially in this generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you were an athlete or anything, you chances are you've thrown your body out of whack or just a computer athlete, too. Yes, right. From sitting or someone who sat at a desk for 10 years, you know, working that job. mouse, working that mouse, mm-hmm. CSB, right, bro? Right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, okay. So we have one more question here. Let's see if we can get to it. And um, we've kind of discussed this, but I think we can go over it again. Liban on Instagram are all oils bad, even coconut oil. Doesn't it have benefits? You know, isn't it interesting, Joe, how the oil just keeps coming back up? Because people want to use coconut oil. And I think we discussed this out of all the oils. That is probably the best because it's made from saturated fat, just like butter. And we talked about this. Right. The thing, the reason that oils oxidize is because they are made from unsaturated fats. Well, and that's yeah, but, the only reason. But they're not a whole food. That's the big thing. Yes, they're not a whole food. Right? I.e., exactly. e., if you leave an apple on your counter, it's fine. But if you split right. it open, it's not. And, and, and especially a lot of what causes oxidation is temperature change. So, and of course, we know even in your own house, your temperature fluctuates, even in shipping, it goes from hot to cold. And then really where the oxidation takes place is when you start cooking with it. <laughs> That's and why we say no fried foods, when, right? <laughs> when, when, I, when I became inflamed, I never cooked with oils, but I poured it on. Right. And the oil had probably changed temperatures for five, six, seven times before you even poured it on, right? My thing is just stay away from all oils, no matter what it is, and just use butter, use ghee. They've been around for centuries. It's fine. It is fine. Okay. It is the medical monopoly slash plant-based initiative that came out specifically, you know, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. That's what brainwashed us into butter's bad. Red meat is bad. Cholesterol is bad. It is not true. Yeah, because it's not true. Your ancestors have been doing this with no problem. Right. All they're trying to do is sell you oils. Yeah. And fake foods. And fake foods. Yeah. Go look at Cheerios. It right on Cheerios. All they do is market cholesterol, cholesterol, cholesterol. This will lower your cholesterol. BS. Right. BS. And first of all, I don't want to lower my cholesterol. Why would I want to lower my cholesterol? I want to be horny. Yes. Someday, Kevin, we'll go <laughs> over where this is. Why all would you want to lower your cholesterol? That's your hormones, man. Yeah. Like. I want to protect my brain. I want cholesterol. Give me cholesterol. They don't get it. Well, and we there was an agenda behind it. And you mentioned it real quick. They want everybody to be plant-based within the next 10 freaking years. To be weak. They, yeah. And when they say plant-based, they're going to give you fake plant-based food. Bill Gates 
is a big investor in Beyond. Anyway, so we are coming to the end of the show. This has <laughs> been a great, 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 great show, Kevin. And, uh, you know, we will be back next week. It's been a great discussion. And uh, But thank everybody. If you have any questions, send them to them on the email. And uh, we will see you next week. Enjoy your Labor Day. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching the Peace Over Pain podcast live inside our clinic's Facebook group. Be sure to submit a question or comment for next week's show at peaceoverpain.com. Also, perform some goodwill and tell a friend in pain that you found their solution. Refer them to the Peace Over Pain podcast and the Peace Over Pain book and help them move closer to their miracle.